following are sets of scores in different tests. Calculate the mean and the standard deviation. So here we've got one set, and here we've got another set. Right, the mean is an average, and the standard deviation is a measurement of spread. Now, just looking at the data, we might think that one more, one of the two sets of data is more spread out than the other. So, the mean, we know how to calculate this. X bar is sigma x over n. That means we add them all up, and we divide by the number of items, which gives me 54 out of 10, which is 5.4. Now, if we want to calculate the standard deviation, standard deviation is like the average of how far each thing is away from the mean. So, if we make a table, so what we've done, we've taken these numbers and written them in the column, and we're now going to work out how far each one is away from the mean. So we're going to do 1 minus 5.4, 4 minus 5.4, 5 minus 5.4, and so on. So we get this, these sets of numbers. So just we'll just go over the last one again. So that'll be 9 minus 5.4, which is 3.6. The problem here, if we find the average of these, the negative ones will cancel out the positive ones. So what we need to do to avoid that problem is that we square it. So we square each of these. So squaring each of these numbers, we get these numbers. For example, 3.6 squared is 12.96. And then what we do is we add all these up. So if we add all these up, we get 66.40, and we take the average of those, so we now divide them by the number of items, which is n. So we get this idea of what's called the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is the sigma the sum of, of x minus x bar all, all squared divided by the number of items. And because we squared them, we take the square root. All right, so the sum of x minus x bar all squared is this one here, 66.40. So putting the numbers in, we get 66.40 divided by 10, because there are 10 items, and that comes to 2.57681, which gives me an answer of 2.58. Now doing repeating the process for the second set of data, so the mean is, is sigma x over n. So it's going to be 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 4 plus 7 divided by 10. That gives me four, 47 over 10, which is 4.7. For the standard deviation, making my column there, so putting these numbers into a column, and then working out how far each one of them is away from 4.7, so we get minus 1.7, 0, minus 0 0.7, 0 0.3, minus 1.7, 1 1.3, 4 minus 4.7 is minus 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 1.3, minus 0 0.7, and this is 7 minus 4.7, which is 2.3. And because some are negative and posit some are positive, we will square them, because we're going to find the average of how far each thing is away from the mean. So squaring each of those individually and then adding them up. So this is the sum of x minus x bar all squared using this formula here. Square root of sigma x minus x bar all squared divided by n, which is going to be 16.10 divided by 10, which is going to give me 1.26885 which gives me 1.2723 significant figures. Now, we know that the first data set is more spread out because it's a higher number. It was 2.5 something, so this is 1.27. And therefore, the first set of data would be better for ranking the students compared with this set of data. There's got to be a reason for calculating the statistic. Now, there's an alternative form of the standard deviation formula, which is not, the proof is not required for the course. So, the original form is the sum of x minus x bar all squared divided by n. This proof is not required for the exam or anything. So, squaring the top here, you get x squared minus 2x x bar plus x bar squared over n. So it becomes the square root of sigma x squared over n minus 2x bar is just a number, so it's 2x bar sigma 
x over n plus sigma x bar squared. So this becomes sigma x bar squared over n. Uh, sigma x over n is the mean itself, so we've got 2 times the mean times the mean. And now we have, we, if we sum in this, we're going to have sum it n times, because there's n lots of it, n lots of x squared over n. Those n's will cancel out, and therefore we're left with sigma x bar squared over n minus 2 x bar squared plus x bar, which gives me this formula. So that the standard deviation is sum of x squared over n minus the mean squared, taking the square root of it. Now, we can see, if we now apply it to these two examples here again, that this is a much easier method. If we remember the mean for A is 5.4, if we put, now put them in a column, and then the formula says I need to square each of those, so squaring each of these we get 1, 16, 25, 100, 49, 25, etc. It says I need to sum these up, so if I sum it up I get 358. And then the formula is the standard deviation square root of sigma x squared, which is 358, divided by n, that's 10, minus my mean squared. So 358 divided by 10 minus 5.4 squared, taking the square root, and then I'm going to get the same answer as I got before, 2.5768. And that gives me 2.5823 significant figures. Repeating it for the other set of numbers, this mean was 4.7. So you have to actually calculate the mean first doing this and then squaring each of the numbers and then summing them, the squares, we get 237. So putting it in, we get 237 divided by 10 minus the mean, 4.7 squared, which gives me 1.26885, which is 1.2723 significant figures. Now we could do this on the GDC. So going to the GDC, now, in this GDC, this is the list for uh, set data set A, and this is the list for data set B. So, just going through the steps here. Uh, so, we'll, we'll do, we'll calculate the statistics for. I'm going to calculate the statistics for A. So, to do that, I'm just going to put the cursor there. Remember, C is free. So, menu, statistics, number one, standard calculations, one variable statistics, the number of lists is one. So I wanted to consider list A, the first set of data 1, but I want to put the results in the first available column, which is C, and now press OK. And we'll see here, if I scroll down, there's the mean, there's the sum of, uh, of, of, of all the data 54, this is sum of x squared, which I just showed you, 358. Now there's two standard deviation formulas. You're going to ignore the one that says SX, and always go for this one, sigma x, which is, gives you 2.57 or 2.58 like we've just done before. Okay, and don't forget you've got all the other data that you've calculated before, like the, the median and the number of items in the data. Right, let's just repeat it for this data now for B. So my first available column is E, menu, statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics, ignore that. So I want to consider list B, Frequency 1, and the first available column is E. We'll press OK, and we get those uh, statistics now. So we got 4.7 for the mean, the sum of, uh, sum of x of the data is 47, the sum of squaring the data is 237, and that standard deviation we've got there is 1.27. 10 items, and again, we've got the medium and the all the other data that we might need from the calculator. Okay, so this is the way you expect to do it in the exam. So, these are screenshots. So it's the original data, that's for A and B. And that's for A and B as well. For A, X is X bar over N, so that's going to be these set here, 54 divided by, 54 divided by 10, which gives me 5.4. I get the 10 by scrolling down, and then the, for the standard deviation, I want the sum of x squared, so that's going to be 358 divided by 10, 
minus 5.4 squared and the actual answer is that 2.57 so 2.58 correct to three significant figures and then for b x bar is going to be sigma x over n so that's going to be these two here in orange 47 divided by 10 it gives me 4.7 so you get all this information on the calculator you can just put this information in show that you've done a little bit of working out 4.7 standard deviation formula square root of sigma x squared over n minus the mean squared so that's going to be 237 divided by 10, 237 divided by 10 minus 4.7 all squared, and that gives me 1.27 to three significant figures. So this is what would be expected you to do in an exam. So this has been a video to show you how to find the standard mean and standard deviation from a data set and using the GDC to help do it as well.